Whitney Houston and Bobby Christina, didn't we almost? The most precious moment in my life when I had my daughter. Whitney wanted to follow in her mom's footsteps. My mother was very concerned that she'd have to leave her children. Mommy loves you, but mommy's got to go to work. She tried to be a good mother, just like her mother. I'm still grieving and, you know, I miss my dad. It was the burden that made her great and the part that caused her to stumble in the end. There's so many parallels between them. They both had addictions. Just like her mom, Brian Christine, just became a media target. Christy, what do you want to say to the Christy to your relationship? They both perished in a bathtub. Not an emergency. Two beautiful women, mother and daughter. Gone too soon. You was here when we be dying. You was here when Bobby Girl died. She always told me I was the light of her life. She always said it's because of you. You know, I'm doing this for you. Breaking news. Whitney Houston, one of the greatest voices of our generation, has died. Bobby Christina was found face down in the bathtub. Bobby Christina, dead at 22. Investigators are trying to figure out what happened. One of my goals is just to stay um, level-headed, you know, and to not uh, have all this take me, you know, around the world in 80 days and come back somebody else, you know. I like who I am. This is the first time I've ever really spoken about Whitney. It's just weird talking about her in a past time. Wow. I've never been asked that question. I worked on Whitney's first album, and we were friends. She was 22 years old in 1984. She was so young, naive, beautiful, innocent, just unbelievably talented, and so unassuming. I've known Whitney since she was 17 years old, but I was a fan of hers before I ever even met her. I was in Saturday Love. <laughs> Like 83, 84, singing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> I was that international star girl at that time. I heard Whitney and could not believe that this little thing had the voice that she had because she was such a little thing at that time. Her angelic tone was just amazing. I looked at her and I said, you are going to be so big that it'll catch you. It'll catch you and you can never go back. And she was like, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to have that problem. Whitney was one of the biggest artists in the world. Whitney is the kind of voice that all people want to have. That voice is golden. She was one of the world's greatest singers. But Whitney wasn't a star to me. My friend, Whitney, is my sister-in-law, best friend. She was my perfect, my perfect, beautiful godmommy. That was my godmother. We were like a, a family. We called her Tia, which is Spanish for aunt. She was just my best friend. What did I call her? Nippy. Nipster, really. I call her Nip. That's like a nickname they gave her when she was younger. People connected to Whitney Houston because she simply was a girl from Newark, New Jersey. Whitney's mom, my grandmother, was one of the most famous backup singers of her time and sang backup for Elvis. My cousin Dion was the first black pop star. Whitney for sure followed in her mom's footstep when it came to that whole gospel feeling and music and a strong voice. That's where my godmother got her voice from. Her mom, Sissy, loves the church, and so do Whitney. The difference between Whitney and Nippy is Whitney is a make-believe person. Like, she had to please everybody. Whitney was somebody that was, um, how can I say this? basically a lie. Like she didn't want to be Whitney Houston. She just wanted to be Nip. 
You don't think of yourself as a star. No, I don't. But you are. So I've heard. So I've heard. We in the industry, we build this perception and this persona that it's the pop princess. But she didn't think of herself as a princess. Whitney's image was bigger than Whitney. But Whitney was really, really touchable. Let's go get a burger in the hood, you know? Let's go get some chicken tacos. Crab out the shell, her favorite. She liked to wear hats to the back. You know, she loved her Converse sneakers. It's her favorite sneakers, Converse. She was what LL Cool J would say, an around away girl. But the world expected perfection. Nippy knew it wasn't no such thing. Like, my, 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 my parents. 
parents. They called my brothers offering money to tell stories. They called friends of mine, and I just like for them to just, you know, don't, don't badger us. Don't, don't scrutinize us. I think it was so much jealousy and envy of their love. The media, for some reason, could not wrap their head around Bad Boy Bobby Brown, Princess Whitney Houston, actually had a connection. Is he the man you want to marry? I will never 
never forget, Chrissy could not sleep without holding her hand in Whitney's entire mouth. And Whitney would sleep like this, and it was okay for her. It's a connection. Sometimes it gets difficult, you know, but um, I have a good husband and he's very understanding and he's very supportive and hopefully she'll be able to look back at it one day and, and just be proud of her mom and, and kind of continue on the legacy of whatever she wants to do, just be the best at it. You checking on the baby or? <laughs> no, I, you know what, it's a habit, you know, my stomach is, is, is growing and I can feel it. And it's like a new feeling again, you know? So I just put my hand there just to, you know, just a motherly thing, I don't know. I did it with Christina too. My godmother suffered more than one miscarriage. And it hurt her really bad. You have a beautiful, precious child. And you pray and you attempt again and then you can't have that baby. But then, still having to perform, still having to be a public figure and put a smile on her face. At the same time, dealing with hurtful backlash coming from the media. My husband and I are doing fine. There are issues that the press is having a field day on. And, I, and sometimes we don't know why. It's just mean. It's a mean. And it's cruel to disrespect two people who are married and trying very hard to keep that going. Bobby Brown is a bad boy. He's wild. He's crazy. He's all those things. But he wasn't a bad person. My name is Rudy Dorlitzai, I'm a filmmaker and I was privileged to film Whitney on tour and on many private situations and we became friends. Rudy, I'm so happy to go home, I can't believe it. Robin Crawford was the one who was discussing with me, how are we going to do this? She was a very sensitive, artistic person already at the time. I could see why Whitney was relying on her in many ways. Who would have known when she was 12 years old and that she wanted to be a professional singer? Whitney Houston and Robin were best friends. She was her personal assistant, her creative director, her aunt, her anything that she could do for her friend, that's what she did. Robin had Whitney's back. That was her rock. What is it our business if, if Whitney Houston was gay or bisexual? I think she was bisexual because I do not think that she would have faked the intensity that you can see with Robin. I'm absolutely sure that she enjoyed sex with Robin or maybe other women. And I'm absolutely sure she did with Bobby Brown. Why did you two end up falling out? You know, Wendy and I didn't fall out. I was always there for her. She knew that. But Robin, you didn't talk to her for, it was 15 years. You two were estranged. We talked to We were never estranged. But you stopped working for it. I moved on because I felt like I had done all that I could do, but she knew where to find me. I think there was no place for Robin at that time to be close and she left because Whitney wanted to make this marriage work with Bobby Brown. What they write about me, I really don't care. I don't really pay too much attention to it because Chrissy's what my focus is all about. Chrissy wanted to be a singer. Her and her mom were so much alike. It was beautiful. It just reminds me of the days when I was on stage with my mother. Because she's starting out about the same age as I. I'm just so pretty. She loved her daughter more than anything. But the road is not an easy thing, and it's not easy for anybody. Whitney was usually on tour, and Bobby Christina couldn't be with her. I am dying to get home to see her little face. She was never together with this child. But that was like when her mother was usually on tour when she was a little girl. I remember my mother receiving a phone call from Elvis to do his comeback show in Vegas. And I was so proud. I remember my mother 
very concerned that she'd have to leave her children for a month. Mommy loves you, and Mommy wants to stay home, but Mommy's got to go to work. It was not an easy life Whitney had when she was a small girl. So she just lived what she learned. You know, I'm, I'm a mother, I'm away from my child, it's very hard. I miss my baby so much. Her little face is going to make my world a lot better. Yes, it will. I think Whitney got tired of it. She needed a break from the spotlight. She needed her daughter. And she needed a friend. It'd be to trust me, so... She's like, they gotta move in the house. And I felt like I had to always protect her. Every single step late, talk. Me and Nip held on to so many bad memories in our past coming up. They molested. Um, I'm gonna say one thing because it ain't there, you know. It's just to tell the truth about one thing she went through, right? Um, she must have been 13 or 14 years old. She was made to do a lot of not so good things. She was just 13 years old. And she was molested. How evil is that? Like, for real. You know, people just don't know what people go through. Especially her. I wanted to be someone other than myself, and I'm sure she did too. But we had to keep it in. We harbored it. We were sick from the drug abuse and the alcohol. We had to become somebody else, so we stayed sedated, so we ain't got to feel the, what we was feeling. It was just an ongoing cycle. Me and Nip held on to so many bad memories in our past coming up. They molested, and you know, and our only outlet was to get high. We couldn't have too much fun out where the public was because she had to keep up this facade. She had to pretend to be this perfect princess, but she wasn't, and she didn't want to be. She was hiding indoors, and the drug use became a normal thing. Bobby goes, you know, she knew what we was doing. Whitney really wanted to take care of her. I'm afraid Whitney doesn't know what to do. Because when she was a little girl, her mother was not present. But she was still Bobby Christina's role model, even with her problems. Whitney didn't want me go nowhere. Then Michael Jackson was having a tribute. He wanted her to perform. It was a big, big special celebration. I remember that concert was so important to her because it was Michael's anniversary. That's her buddy. Yeah, she's seen herself in him. Like, you know, Michael wanted to be himself as well because they both went through the same things. So she wanted to support him. But it was just not the right time. Us to stop. 
Crack is whack. Crack is whack, you know, so. And it really is. It was in denial, but it was funny then. It's not funny now. Yeah. At that time, everyone is talking about her drug use, her behavior, her this, her that, her the other. The media and Wendy Williams talked about her as a mother, drugs, what she's going through in her relationship. Like, it just was no ending. She was tired, Wendy. Enough was enough. She was like, bitch, I'll kick your ass. And I was in the background like, yeah, I'm a helper. Approximately two weeks after Diane Sawyer, I did my radio interview, but that became a light bulb moment in my career. It was Wendy Williams, you know, and Wendy Williams before television. It was like the radio Wendy Williams, which, like, that's the unedited version of her. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Lord. Have I waited for this day? Have you? Well, yes. lasted for 28 minutes and had lots of peaks and valleys. Bobby um, has had a reputation occasionally to step out on the marriage. Oh, really? Say the gossips. Okay, thank you. Has infidelity been one of the biggest issues in you guys' marriage? No. What would you say the biggest issue is in you all's marriage? You people. You people like a run your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you could take back anything that you told Diane Sawyer, what would it say? If I could say something that I didn't say, you got a problem with your kids, my You talk about me, and you never see me in your damn life, but you talk about me. That's not what Everyone was talking about her. Everyone was talking about this interview. Everyone was talking about this interview. Yes, you are. At the time, there was a lot of 
tabloid talk and Saturday Night Live. I remember constantly defending my aunt, even Bobby Christina. The media, news reports, tabloids, everybody wanted a piece of her. Whitney Houston had been built up as this princess that anything normal she did, everybody threw the drugs on her. I've seen her go through it. I remember one time Chrissy and Whitney and I had went out to eat and Whitney was in a long fur coat and her hair was looking a little bit of a hot mess when we stopped at the gas station. Whitney met a young, handsome gentleman who was like, I'm a huge fan of yours, you know, I really look up to you. I can't believe I'm meeting Whitney Houston. Can I please get a picture? That guy talked himself up to be this huge fan and took this picture of her, and then he sold it for all this money. We were in school, and some kids said, Chrissy, I saw your mom all whacked out in this picture. But Chrissy fought hard to defend her. Whitney was all she had. It was very hard on Whitney. When you can't be who you are and you have to be who the world wants you to be, that is not a way of life. Like, yeah, the whole world was coming at her like, you don't even know what this girl's been through. But we need help getting off these drugs. So we came up with a thing for Inquirer. explained about that picture that wasn't just her mess that was our mess she knew everything i was writing and it was a cry for help for both of us that's the lowest point i seen with tina and whitney houston and that's when i stepped in the family called me to come and be with her and it was all kind of paraphernalia on that kind of i cleaned it up she wanted to be a good mother. She wanted to be there for Chrissy and her husband. And somehow the drugs got in the way. Whitney was dealing with the disease of addiction, and she needed to be detoxed right away. We just knew we was going to die. It had gotten that bad. I spent lots of time in the house, <laughs> playing with my cats and, and watching old TV and reading a book. I'm just going to be... Uh, for some time. Whitney was an everyday person. She used to tell me, I just want to be normal. Just let me be at home and be a mommy. Just let me be a wife. My name is Lori Starks. I was Whitney's mentor when she had a substance abuse problem in Atlanta, Georgia. I didn't get too much sleep dealing with Whitney. I got to watch every move because she was real slick, the Jersey slick girl. Like when she went to detox, the nurses called her like, she's trying to get out. So I walked in the room, she had about eight sheets tied together. Those sheets out the window trying to crawl out the windows. I was like, what are you doing? Do you know how far up you are, about 12 flights? And she was like, oh, where you come from, you know? And I was like, you better get back in that bitch. And I had to stay in the room with her to get through the detox. After that, we had a house in Gwinnett, Georgia. And I lived with her. Chrissy stayed at the house with us when Whitney was in recovery. Chrissy went everywhere that we went. I was real serious about her recovery. I said, you either going to do this, or I can't save you. You know, I remember one night Bobby came over to see her, and he bought a case of beer. And I said, I'm doing a room check. And that's how I found the beer. And I said, well, you got to leave. You can't stay. And he left. He respected the fact that I was really trying to help her. I want the world to know that she tried.
Chrissy was her baby, her heart. That's what kept her going. She just wanted to be at home and be a mommy. She wanted a break from being on the stage. But they kept booking her shows. They wouldn't let her have a break. She was supposed to do some other shows. She was going to do a couple more albums. I think Whitney's actual pressures were coming back to the stage and everyone expecting her to be that 20-year-old voice that she was 24 years ago. You have to have people on your side to say she's done. I would say, Nippy, you don't ever have to sing another song, honey. Just go do your own stuff. I said, because let me tell you something. I have been singing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday for 35 years in the same key. So don't let them tell you you need another record, honey. She was on a good path of not using any drugs. But then, you know, there's people telling you what to do every day. Where I don't think she could find peace and that's what would make her go back to using drugs. When you have that pressure on you to deliver on stage, on a tour, almost every day, also be a mother, also be a friend, then try to judge. Just try to be Whitney Houston for one day.
Bobby Brown and Whitney separated, it gave Whitney a chance to say, okay, what do you need from me? What you doing, babe? I'm full time. The two of them created a mother and daughter bond just being together by themselves. Oh, I love you. I can't believe some of the stuff that I hear. She wasn't a good mother. She wasn't there for her daughter. That's not true. I guess what kind of making me emotional. I heard that Whitney didn't take her to school. I was right there. And I know that Whitney took her to school. Whitney loved her. <laughs> Laguna Beach House was said to be a rehab house. It was for them to get away from people and enjoy each other's company without, you know, paparazzi and the L.A. scene. Nobody knew about this place. Whitney loves, 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 loves water. Starter Chrissy swimming. <laughs> That's something that they love to do together. I remember walking on the beach. She's kicking and looking at the sand and just taking it all in of who she was now in Laguna Niguel. It was just like, can we just go on the beach and just sit? Can we just watch? Can I just be just nippy and not with me? Nick grew up in the same town that Chrissy and I did. Hi, Nick. How's it going? There was a Starbucks and a Waffle House. That's kind of where the whole story begins. Chrissy and Nick became super close. Chrissy found security in having another man around because of the absence of Bobby, because he was there all the time. When he treated him like a son, like 100%. Is this guy Nick? And she goes, Oh, it's your new cousin. So I approached Nick. Why are you hanging out with my cousin who's 16? And Chrissy immediately pushed me away. I was like, Let it go, let it go, let it go. What do you want to say to the Chrissy to your relationship? People say it's wrong. Is it wrong? No comment. Before her divorce, my aunt, Whitney, would defend my Uncle Bobby. You say things about my husband, and I'll attack you. I know it, you know, I know that. There's certain things you can press on me and I'll just go for your throat. I think trying to defend Nick might be all probably Christina knew how to do based off of watching her mother. Needs to be in a locked room with my niece downstairs. And I used to run down there like every 30 minutes, like and the door's always locked. I tried to tell Nick, you know, but she was in denial. She said, he's protecting her. No, he would never do that. Every time I came over there, like he would have our credit cards. And I go to Nip, like, you know, he got your credit card. No, I didn't know. No, it's fine. It's fine. Nip trusted Nick. And I kept telling her, he's no good. But it wasn't the same after the divorce. She begged me, begged every day. I got to get my husband back. Bobby is already in another relationship with Alicia. His girlfriend became pregnant. It was like, there's no way that I can bounce back from this one. Their relationship was more public than anyone else's. It's hard enough dealing with heartbreak behind closed doors. And I remember her saying, I just want to hide. Nick moved in, and she could do that. Nick would run and get food for them. He would go grocery shopping. He was helping Whitney around the house. Anything Whitney wanted him to do, he would do it. The townhouse had just happened again. She stopped doing drugs again. Nick used to go get our dope for us. Bobby Christina, too. Yeah. She didn't do anything until she started hanging around Nick. And I go to Nick like Bobby Girls abusing. She was in denial. She said, he's my son, Tina, that's your nephew. And I said, he's no nephew of mine. 
Whitney needed love. She needed people that really cared for her, that would really say, hey, yo, think you're doing too much of that. Let's do this over here. It was really tough to see her struggle and go through some tough times and see the press chase her and beat her up. But Whitney was one of the greatest icons, I think, to inspire the world. We all fell in love with her. So I think we all wanted her to come back and be that huge again. When she could sparkle, it was like her cut back. She was the executive producer of the movie. She was in a good space. She was healthy. It was like a fire was lit up underneath her and she was ready to go. After the movie, Whitney just wanted to love and be loved. She was determined to overcome the heartbreak of being alone and not being loved with Ray J and it was a brand new beginning. She could date anyone she wanted to in life, but she always liked the bad boys. Stella got her groove back. Me, Whitney, my husband Max, and Ray J will go out and live it up. I mean, you know, she may have been older. You can call her whatever you want. I think that Whitney thought, well, if Bobby can do whatever he wants to do, I can too. She felt like she was 21 years old with him. She felt like the prettiest woman in the world. My godmother's normal attire, tight pants, the white top. Now she's talking about a dress. A dress? Yeah, you know, with tight fitting, something to show my cleavage a little, like, huh?
after the party that night. Chrissy's by herself in a bath. She fell asleep in the tub. Whitney said that God told her to go check on Chrissy. Her mother literally was her savior. If my godmother had not walked in that bathroom the very second that she did, Chrissy would have died. The next morning, Whitney was like, Chrissy almost died last night. Sean and Nick, like, you guys need to stay away from that water. Like, get away from the water. That water is evil. It was the day of the party. The red carpet was out. Everybody's pulling in. Every year, Clyde's Grammy parties are just one of the best things in the whole world. It's the place to be for the industry. Whitney was always a big part of the night's festivities. This year, she was going to be the guest of honor. Nobody, not one person, could have predicted what would happen that night. I arrived at the hotel at about three. I got on the elevator. Once I got upstairs, I could hear wailing, and I immediately dropped my bag, took off running to Whitney's room. I could see security when they said, call 911. So at the hotel, call 911. Not an emergency. I just started screaming. 
screaming, screaming, screaming. Please don't go away, please. Please fix this. She's not gone. Why are you saying this stuff right now? I went out in my garage and cried. I didn't, I just prayed and told God that maybe she could rest now. Everybody won't be pulling on her and depending on her. And I looked out the window and I seen the cars pulling up. And they came in. I feel my family members and the nips gone. And I remember it's like a stab on through here and I dropped Ted heart attack. Whitney Houston. One of the greatest voices of our generation has died. I had the feeling that something wasn't right and that there was foul play involved. And the reason I say that is because Whitney was found in the bathtub. And Whitney never took baths in hotel rooms. So the fact that Whitney was found in a bathtub doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense. I like to say thank you for your prayers. before she passed. She asked me to come to LA. I wish I would have went. It might have been different. I don't know. But, um... Today did her farewell at the Newark, New Jersey church where Whitney Houston found her voice as a young girl. Her music really touches your heart, touches your soul. She was a great person and she's one of us. I realized like her icon status at the funeral, seeing the turnout of all the fans and the amount of love that was shown on the street. We love you, Whitney. I love it, I love it, I love it. Please stay. Whitney, I just love it. God bless Whitney. Everything she has done for the city of Newark, and how she has touched everyone's heart here in Newark and all over the world. An army of journalists, many from overseas, reflected Whitney's worldwide fame. Well, Whitney was one of the greatest icons in the world. Scores of people in every country loved her. Whitney was much more than an iconic superstar. This was an amazing, beautiful, vibrant woman. She loved her fans, she loved her family, and she did the best that she could. She was one of the world's greatest singers. But the thing about it is you can sing and give your voice to the world, and the, that world is the same world that can bring you down and kill you, too. And let's pray 
precious moment in my life when I had my daughter. I was very proud of her, very proud of her. And I miss her. The Whitney I knew, despite her success and worldwide fame, still wondered, am I good enough? Am I pretty enough? Will they like me? It was the burden that made her great and the part that caused her to stumble in the end. opportunity 
to lock down the daughter of a legend. Hey guys, how are we doing? So we heard about the wedding. Is it true? Did you guys really get married? Can we see the ring? Can we see? Can we see? Can we see? Oh, Chrissy. Wow. Is it official though? Are you officially married? We're officially married. Okay. No. Chrissy was never legally married to Nick. She asked that we go along with it and I'm never going to embarrass anyone I love. Was it ever a ceremony? No. Chrissy just wanted to love and be loved. And she wanted security. When Whitney passed away, she was devastated. It was her mom, her best friend. You just wanted to be supportive because you loved her. And she never told me really negative things. But I would have a sense that something was going on because of the I need you right now calls. There was one night, it was like two in the morning, Chrissy called me hysterically crying, telling me she got into a fight with Nick. I just told her, Chrissy, calm down, take a breather, what's going on, come talk to me, I'm gonna come pick you up right now, where are you, tell me exactly where you are. And then the phone cuts out. I heard from her three days later and she was like, oh yeah, like me and Nick just like got into this fight and like I had a little bit to drink, so I was probably being overdramatic. In her mind, like, it was just another day. There were telltale signs of abuse. This is Rick and Ellard Security, 90 River Bend Manor. Just had a neighbor call and report some kind of domestic dispute. That time, Chrissy came to my house and she told me that Nick laid his hands on her and that she felt that she deserved it. Oh, it was just a little slap. Like, it's not a little slap. That's a big deal. I was worried about my knees hanging around Nick. And Nick took a lot of pills, gave her a lot of pills, you know. He had my knees strung out on all them drugs. After Whitney passed, I was definitely worried about Chrissy because I knew how close their bond was. When Whitney died, Bobby helped his daughter by just being here for you know. The media always said how Bobby Brown was a bad father, but he definitely loved his daughter with all his heart. He did all the right things. He did the best he could. Bobby and Bobby Christina had an amazing connection. She loved her dad. She was a daddy's girl. And it was just hard for both of them. They both suffered. After her mother passed away, Nick Gordon was the closest thing to her. I know. We have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful future ahead of us. <laughs> Chrissy loved Nick, but I was very much worried about her because he had the leash on her at all times. Chrissy and Nick were living in the same townhouse that Whitney had lived in with them prior. Max was a good friend of Bobby Chris. The same with Nick, they were good friends. Max goes upstairs into Chrissy's bedroom and the door was locked. Max was banging on the door, nobody was answering, so Max broke down the door and found Chrissy in the bathtub, face down. They pulled her out of the bathtub. Nick raised her feet to let the blood flow back to her brain. They tried to give her mouth to mouth and to no avail, so they called the ambulance. CPR in progress. 21 year old female in the bathtub, face down, PD's around. Bobby 
Christina Brown is in an Atlanta area hospital this morning. She was found unresponsive in a bathtub in a scene eerily similar to her mother's death three years ago. When officers arrived, they found Nick Gordon performing CPR. Investigators are now trying to find out what happened before that. When I heard, I almost fainted. I was devastated. I screamed, no, help her. No, no. My name is Maya Green, and I became involved in this case when the homicide detective called me to let me know that um, Bobby Christina was in a coma. He noticed that the home was in disarray. There was drug paraphernalia around the home. Her body was over the tub. She was missing teeth. Nick supposedly had dragged her up the stairs with her hair. That's why her teeth were missing. He's a monster. So, did she drown? Was there a drug overdose? We needed to do the investigation to determine what caused her to become unconscious. The detective interviewed the witnesses on hand, and he believed that it was drug-related. The fact that she was found in a bathtub with this same fate as her mother doesn't make any sense. Bobby was always by Chrissy's side in the ICU. It definitely was a lot for Bobby Brown to take. But I'm proud of the way he handled the whole situation. He did all he could for his daughter. Jack Walker, 
I'm Nick Gordon's younger brother. People made him out to be this monster, and Nick literally was not that person that everybody was making him out to be. My brother loved Whitney and Chrissy so much. He was destroyed through Whitney passing and Chrissy passing. That destroyed my brother drastically. My brother tried to commit suicide because he was just so messed up in the head. And on top of losing somebody that he cared about, it was him being blamed for it. And it really messed him up. Still grieving and, you know, I miss both of them. 